The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. Additional support is provided by Wathers Trains, everything you need to build a great model railroad. Check out their website at wathers.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for May 2022. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we do have a great show. First off, we start out by weathering this beautiful EM1 articulated steam locomotive from Bachman Industries in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is a model that they had come out with a few years past, and it looks absolutely amazing when it goes from brand new fresh to an absolutely weathered looking workhorse that's been working the main lines. And I take you through the entire process step by step, and that's the how-to article in this month's video. We also have a great interview with Matt Stern, the communication director of Bachman Industries, and he, he shows us a lot of the new products that are coming out this month. That's what I like about the show. We get to see new stuff first before anybody else, and it's wonderful to have that kind of stuff. I've got some great drone footage from our drone pilot, Dan Scheidel. This month, he shared with us a lot of BNSF consists. You'll recognize these locomotives, and I love weathering ideas from above because that's the segment where if you can make your scenery look just like it does in these videos, all the answers are there for everything that we want to do. And finally, we have a great N-scale layout. This is an interview I did at a great American train show, and this is the Gateway N-scale uh, layout. In fact, it's called Gateway N-Track. And these guys have worked very hard, and there's a lot of different animation, from moving race tracks to barges to Jurassic Parks and thunderstorms. This is a modular layout that is sure to please. And so with that, I do want to say, please check out the weekly show that we do every week, the What's Neat This Week and Modern railroading podcast that's where i share with you interviews special guests all the latest news in the hobby every week keeping you updated on this the best hobby in the world model railroading and so with that let's continue on with the rest of this may 2022 what's well, neat Hi, my name is Ken Patterson. Welcome to my little world. In this video, I'm going to show you how I weather these beautiful EM1 locomotives from Bachman. I want to show you the work area that we're going to work with. I'm using Van Dyke brown oil paints to put a wash on the EM1 locomotive. And I'm going to spread this oil out on this stone. 
I'm using terpenoid as the thinner for the oils this time because terpenoid doesn't eat the decals off of the locomotives, which is kind of nice. Now I'm just going to thin this oil paint a little bit with a brush. I won't use this brush for our main weathering because it's going to be just too heavy. So let me thin this out. I'm working on four tiles, four marble tiles. It's easier to work with than any other flat surface. I'm using one inch brushes to do the pull downs of the oils. And I'm just going to apply a wash to this locomotive. I'll start by wetting my brush. I'll blot it on a paper towel here, make sure it's just the right. And then I rub it in the oil paints. I'll start applying this wash to the locomotive quite liberally. All I'm doing is washing the oils on here. I'm getting every crevice, every pipe, every walkway of the boiler. You'll get a feel on how to handle a locomotive after you've done this a few times. It looks like a juggling act, but in fact, I've got real good control of the model side where I can place the brush's face right where I need it to fill in underneath the handrails and underneath the uh, firebox. I think the key to oil paint weathering like this is really getting over the fact that you're going to take your brand new out of the box locomotive and start covering it up like this. It doesn't make sense at first, but then once you see the final finished product, it looks so good that you'll, you won't be able to help yourself. This is how you'll weather everything. This grime effect I apply to every model that I do. Diesels, buildings. Just that simple. This is going to look very nice when this dries. Now I'm going to do the tender the same way. Just a quick wipe of the heavy Van Dyke Brown. I'm not using the paper towel to blot very much here. I would on a lighter color freight car, but because this is black, this is taking a lot of, of paint. You want to keep your strokes straight down. Rain, water, washes straight down. If you have any sideways strokes or any strokes that accidentally veer a little bit to the right or to the left, it's not going to look as effective as if it was pulled straight down. So you want to keep all of your strokes straight down when you use oil paint weathers. Now I want to explain the workspace. Here we've got the engine that we previously washed with weather, weather uh, oil paints. And this locomotive is now is going to go through the rest of the process of uh, dust, sand finish weathering, the soot from the exhaust that we're going to apply. I've got this on a rotating uh, Lazy Susan so that I can have good control of both sides of the engine but yet have it stay in contact with the power of the track because when we're spraying the drivers, we're going to keep this locomotive running. I've got a jar here, a little bowl full of turpentine. I'm using straight. Uh, turpentine and the reason for that is because turpentine will cut the oversprayed paint mixture that I'm going to put, apply which will be our dust finish from the sand dust and turpentine will cut that as I pull it down as opposed to turpenoid which I used on this engine when we originally gave the oil paint wash turpenoid doesn't affect uh, oil paint so turpenoid wouldn't cut 
the weathering mix as I pull it down, whereas the turpentine would. So I think it's important to cover that. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch into this now. The first thing I'm going to do is apply the black uh, soot grime that would come out of the exhaust stacks. We've got an airbrush, an air booth here, 500 cubic feet of air draw, and I'm using an Iwata airbrush here set to about 20 pounds of air pressure. Now I'm just applying a straight spray of local engine black across the top of the tender and the boiler. To represent the soot. Now we're going to pull that down. I need to also uh, spray the drivers. I want to get rid of that shiny metal driver finish. What I have here is I've connected the locomotive to my DCC on my layout that runs around the room so that I'll have power to speed this up and run it when I'm spraying the black on so that I don't get any driver shadows on the wheels. I'll get a good even spray spray these drivers, tone down the bright silver on the drivers, and then I'm going to do the other side. I'm applying Bachman Easy Lube conductive lubricant to the top of the rail so that when the locomotive is running I will have good conductivity and the drivers will slip easily on the rail. I'm going to apply just a little bit of black on the drivers and the side rods just to get rid of that metal finish. And I'm spraying with about 20 pounds of air pressure and I've got the black paint mixed. Uh, about 20% paint and the rest thinner, so it goes on as a nice uh, black, fine finish, a thin finish. I want to get the locomotive moving again. I'm going to apply just a little bit of lubricant to the track here. It's conductive lubricant. And let's spray these. Again, just to get a good coat of black on the drivers. Now I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to dip it in my turpentine over here. I've got a blotter attached to my arm with a rubber band so I can blot it dry and I'm going to start pulling down the black that we applied to the roof, to the uh, top of the boiler. And then I'll move on down the side of the boiler. All I'm doing is pulling down that black that I sprayed right on top to give it the rain wash effect. And I want to also pull down the black on the drivers just a little bit. down the black again on the top of the boiler evenly, even smooth strokes. Drivers. Let's stop Dirk. Okay, I've sprayed the drivers black and the top of the boiler black and pulled that down with the turpentine. Now I need to actually switch my paint, so I'm going to turn on the spray booth here and switch colors to a uh, more of a brownish gray weathering shade. Now, I just mixed this paint a little while ago and I didn't mix it on film. I didn't document mixing it. 
But I'm going to explain to you what I did. Essentially, I took the spray bottle and I filled it up with just a little bit of lacquer thinner, about an eighth of an inch thick. And then I mixed into that lacquer thinner a little mixture of concrete, uh, roof brown, and earth. And you're going to ask me, how much of that paint did I put in there? I literally took the bottle and just turned it up just a little bit like that until I got the shade of color into the lacquer thinner that gave me a, a good rendition of this brown. Then I mixed in a little bit of the earth and a little bit of the concrete until I came up with what was close to a brownish grayish weathering medium. It doesn't have to be exact, close enough to, to match prototype pictures. In this case I'm using a morning sun book uh, to kind of give me just a little guidance on how the EM1 locomotives weather. So now that I've got this paint switched, I'm going to run the locomotive. I'm going to get the drivers to spin so that I don't get any driver shadows on the wheels as I start applying this light dusting. And I'm going to take it from the second driver and I'm going to go back. Bring it all the way down to tender. You want to make sure the drivers are spinning when you're applying the paint to this area of the locomotive because you do not want the, the driver blocking, uh, being blocked by the side rod because that will create a shadow, which will not look good. Now I'm going to do this to the other side of the locomotive, same way. Third to second driver back, trailing truck and right up the tender with your sand dust mixture. Second driver back is where it accumulates on the wheels. Now I'm going to take my my brush, just dip it in the turpentine, blot it. And I'm going to start pulling down the dry dust that we just applied to this model. That includes the tender, trailing truck, and I want to do the side rods without touching the drivers. I need to get these side rods to spin so I can get to them, so I'm going to hook up my DCC power here, get the locomotive to move just a little bit so I can get to those drivers. And I want to pull down the dust on the drivers to give the rain effect of straight down wash. Same on the wheels. And then I'll do the other side of the locomotive the same way. I'm going to dip in my turpentine again just to get a, clean the brush, blot it on my blotter here, and pull down even strokes straight down the same way. I'll turn off that spray booth so we can hear. The same on the drivers. I want to pull down the white, dusty, sandy mixture. just want to pull down the drivers on this side. Now what I want to do is apply one more coat of dust to the locomotive and I don't want to pull this one down. I don't want this to be rain wash dust. I want this to be fresh just applied dust in between storms. So I'm going to turn on the spray booth here and start the engine running and spraying the drivers moving. 
Now I'm using an Iowata airbrush here. And what I like about these airbrushes is the Pache three ounce jars fit. I swear by these jars, they work so well. This uh, dust is coming from the second driver back again. A little bit on the tender. Third to second driver back. Then I'll turn it around and do the other side. I'm going to second driver back. A little dust on the tender. And now I'm ready to do the valve grease. I'm going to take my ivory black paint straight out of the tube. I'm going to blot just a little bit here on the side of the model so I get the right consistency of the mixture here. This is where I'll work. This is my palette now. And I want to apply this. I'm blotting this a little bit too heavy on the brush. I want to apply this dark oiled effect grease right in on here. This gives a very effective dirty oily lubricated effect because there's not a lot of sand or dust in this. This is fresh oil so you want this area to be dark. After that dries, that pretty much concludes uh, the weathering of this locomotive.
For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern, the Communication Director of Bachman Industries in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with us today. And he's going to update us on the new and wonderful products coming from Bachman Industries. It's always great to get an update from a major manufacturer like yourself, Matt. Now, the folks watched the video and just saw me weather that beautiful HO scale EM1 locomotive that Bachman had come out with a few years past. And I just want to stress that those models are in fact available currently in the catalog in N scale. Yes, our uh, N scale EM1 is, uh, it, it, it's one of actually my personal favorite locomotives. It's, it's just a fantastically detailed model. Um, it's, uh, and, and it's, it, it's such a unique locomotive too. Um, <laughs> It's something that I think will find a home on, on any N scale layout. It, even if it's not a Baltimore, Ohio layout, it's it's a talking point locomotive. It absolutely is. You can find them out on eBay. They're going for very high prices right now. But the fact is, someday in the future, as we've always seen, Bachman may in, reintroduce that product to the market. You never know. You never know. So Matt, you've got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Tell us. Yeah, so uh, we have Quite a few new uh, freight cars coming out this year. If you've seen our 2022 catalog, we have um, a good amount of HO scale stuff, and we also have some large scale cars. Um, Got that catalog now, right here. Check it out. Unfortunately, the uh, the large scale cars are uh, are actually out at a train show at this time, so I don't have them on hand. Okay. Um, but I do have. Uh, we also have the large scale Dash Nine, which I know a lot of people are very excited about. Um, and again, unfortunately, the, the uh, samples we have right now are at the train show, but I do have a cab sample here. This is a very uh, rudimentary sample here, but it will we'll kind of give you an idea of some of the detail. Like we've got the, uh, the separately applied windshield wipers, um, the railings and rungs, and uh, this is actually the, uh, the Gullwing cab version. So the Santa Fe and BNSF versions will actually have the Gullwing cab as per the prototype, whereas the uh, the standard cab that doesn't have these divots will be on the uh, the other versions. That's absolutely fantastic. And they created those divots so that that engine would fit as they run them through the coal system, the rotary dumpers, as I recall, a long time ago. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that's so. That's fantastic. I did shoot a Bachman cover using a pre-production sample of that model. Uh, variations of the model are going to be different than what you see, but let me show you this beautiful photograph that we shot. This was a desert scene and it came out really neat. It was just a great shot on a diorama, so check it out. So Matt, what else you got to talk about? So we have a good amount of new HO scale stuff to show you. Um, this is all stuff that's currently, um, it, we've just received development samples of them, so it's nothing that's hit the market yet, but we expect to see these hopefully by the end of the year, if not sooner. Fantastic. Um, so the first things I can show you here are, we've got our new line of PS2 hoppers. These are, a little different to the previous run that we had. Um, these are the late versions. So this, the early versions and the late versions, so I don't think I have an early version sitting around here, unfortunately. But the uh, the difference in design is they just have this single post here, whereas the early versions had a, uh, a, a thinner double post at the end of the car. So it's a very small difference, but it, uh, it, it, it keeps it correct for these later versions. That's fantastic. And those come with metal wheel sets and those beautiful couplers that look scale, don't they? They do, yeah. They come with uh, our metal wheel sets, black and metal wheels. Um, we also have, if you look underneath here, we've got some separately applied details, such as um, we've got the brake lines. Um, they're going to stay black. I believe they were painted with the color of the car on the old versions, but in, in reality, they usually are a separate color to the rest of the car, so we've, we've kept them black for these. And uh, you can kind of see here, we've got, you can see the uh, see-through walkway up here on the top. So we actually have, uh, trying to get it in the light here. That's very cool. Kind of see it at the end of the car there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so it's all it's all uh, see-through there, um, just as it would be on the prototype. This is the MKT version. Um, this is an MOW car, I believe. And then uh, the other sample I have here is the, uh, the CSX version. And we have a uh, Southern Pacific one here as well. Very uh, nice. Oh, look at that. And uh, we do actually have a BNSF version as well, but this is also out of the show right now. Okay. So that is our PS2 hopper. Um, that's uh, a nice kind of modern era freight car that we've got to look forward to. Um, we also have some little earlier era cars here. Um, these samples actually just came in yesterday, so this will be the, uh, the first unveiling of them. Um, these are our 50-foot uh, um, reefer cars. Oh, that's beautiful. 
We saw a pre-production sample of one of those in the previous What's Neat video. I think Larry Harrington showed that off, but now you've got a decorated sample there. Yes, these are our first decorated samples. Um, we have a we have one here for Canadian Pacific, and we have another one here for Railway Express Agency, which uh, I think is just a fantastic looking scheme. It is absolutely. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to weather one of those. <laughs> sure, it'll look fantastic. <laughs> Um, and one of the things that's cool about these cars is they're actually based off of a New York Central prototype. Um, they're very similar to cars that could be seen across the country. Um, but uh, I don't believe a model of this particular design of car has been done um, in a very long time, if, 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 if ever, in the past in HO scale. Um, and uh, just to go over a couple of the details on this car. Um, so again, we have, we have separate walk walkways up here on the top. Um, we have a uh, really nicely detailed end, end here. You can kind of see there's a uh, kind of ornate looking brake wheel here. That's beautiful, um, we've got yes. The, we've got the ladders up here and um, we've got the rungs down here, the grab irons. Very nice. And these actually ran, uh, so they're in our freight car section in the catalog, but it, it's worth mentioning that these actually ran um, in passenger trains. So they would usually typically be at the head end of the train. Um, they would be behind the locomotive in front of the passenger cars. And the reason they would do that is because they would be trying to get the stuff to market as quickly as possible. And the passenger trains always have priority. Absolutely right. That's amazing. It's great that you have this knowledge. It's great that you can, when you're at a train show and you're discussing this with the customer, it adds that much more value to the presentation. Absolutely, yeah. And then we do have a few more other items here as well. Um, so you might remember um, we had a train set that came out in 2019, which I have here, which is our transcontinental train set. This was uh, hugely popular. It was brought out to uh, coincide with the 150th anniversary of the, uh, the driving of the Golden Spike. Absolutely. Um, one of the things with this set, though, is that if you notice in the set here, we had both locomotives and we had one passenger car per locomotive, which doesn't really make a train. So, beautiful, done beautiful that, photograph on that box, by the way. Oh yeah, Wh whoever photographed that is very, very talented. How much fun is that? Um, so we actually have brought out the, uh, if, in the set here, if I uh, <laughs> bring it back up one more time, um, you've got the Union Pacific baggage car, and then you've got the Central Pacific, um, or it's a combine car, sorry, and then you've got the Central Pacific coach car. Um, so what we've done is, as separate sale items in our catalog this year, we're bringing out the Union Pacific coach car and the Central Pacific combine car. So you can actually make a train that's more than one car for both locomotives. Absolutely. Plus that train set would make a great display set on anybody's mantle or desk. Oh, absolutely. That's fantastic. Great concept and marketing on that. Thanks. Um, and then uh, just a couple more items here. We have the, uh, we have a new 40 foot reefer here the uh, Woodside Reefer. This one is uh, Tipo Table Wines. Um, I believe we're gonna do a little bit of paint adjustment to this, so this is not the final paint scheme, but it's uh, all, all the graphics and everything are is how they'll be on the final car. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, we, we think it's a really cool paint scheme. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 it's just an interesting car. It certainly is. And last but not least, we also have two new, uh, uh, two new 50 foot reefers. Um, these are Let's see, here we go. We've got the uh, Burlington route, and we've got the Conrail, and uh, these are going to be joining our 50-foot line, which we've had around for a while, but um, I don't think we've had any paint schemes quite like these before in it, so uh, we're, we're pretty excited about that. This is amazing. You all are pushing the envelope for creating prototype-looking models. Now, will we see you at the NMRA National here in St. Louis coming up very shortly? So unfortunately, I will not be there personally, but we will be there as a, as a company. Absolutely fantastic. Everybody's gonna be able to see all these beautiful new models at the show, touch them, feel them, and check them out, plus meet the wonderful people that are Bachman. That's awesome, isn't it? So is there anything else? Have we covered everything for this month, Matt? So I think we've pretty much covered it. Um, we're always getting new products in, new samples, so uh, who knows what we'll have next month. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much for showing the viewers of the What's Neat show what's new and exciting out there in Philadelphia. No doubt there's a lot of exciting products that they are going to love. And so with that, Matt, thank you very much. And that is this segment for May's What's Neat. All right. Thanks a lot.
segment of What's Neat. I'm standing here with Jeremy Jansen, and I'm also standing here with Dale Blust. And you guys represent the gateway and track layout that is better than uh, what, 21 years old, you were explaining to me. Yep, that's correct. Tell me, Dale, about your passion for this hobby, guys. I've enjoyed training since I was a teenager. And we just thought it'd be fun to pick a scale and start building some modules. Nice. And we're both co-founders of, uh, yeah, Gateway. I, I had Gateway Club started and they had St. Charles and Scale and we merged together in 2000. Nice. Okay, I understand that because I remember that layout as well. Now, Jeremy, tell me, what is the minimum radius on this layout? Uh, minimum radius is uh, 21 inches. Okay, and the height is about, uh, it's perfect for viewing, uh, what's the height? 40 inches. 40 inches. Now, you guys have got a lot of different scenes modeled on this with a lot of animation. Let's start talking about the raceway. How amazing is that? Pretty neat. It took me several years to actually get it working the way I wanted it. Yes. And it's one of the big attractions when the kids come around and the adults. Right. Do you have a magnet system? What, what makes the cars go? There's two belts underneath the layout, and they've got 22 magnets, silicone to the belt. And then each of the cars have a little bitty magnet on it that follows the big magnet. That is so interesting and amazing to watch. You've also got Jurassic Park with some dinosaurs. That was actually my grandson's idea. Okay. He was about 15 when he came up with the idea he wanted to do Jurassic Park. And I said, well, I'll help you with it, but you lay it out. So he took a piece of paper, drew up what he thought should be, and uh, we followed that exactly to the T. Very cool. Jeremy, tell me, I saw you parking your train in this beautiful long switch yard a few minutes ago. What do you model? What's your railroad? Uh, I primarily model a Santa Fe railroad. Okay. Uh, so you like the long, run long trains? Uh, sometimes, mostly I like running switching, but this one's more suited for long trains. Very cool. Another neat thing, Dale, that I noticed on this layout was you've got like this fort, this, this Wild West theme scene. Tell us about that. Well, it belongs to uh, a guy that left the club a year ago, but Joe had a lot to do with it. Um, Another scene that I noticed you've got on this is a river scene with a ferry ferrying back and forth and a dry dock. Tell us about that wonderful scene. That was also made by Joe. Okay. I came up with the animation after he asked me if I could move his ferry back and forth. And I said, yeah, we can do it, no problem, so. That's very cool. I noticed on the other side, the far side of the layout, you've got Europe modeled, you've got a storm-like cloud scene. I mean, this layout, every single module has its own theme and is so interesting. I agree with you. Um, everybody has different ideas when they're making a module. We're trying to always make something different, something new all the time. That's awesome. Listen, guys, I want to thank you so much for sharing this layout with the viewers of What's Neat. This is the best hobby in the world, and it's because of folks just like you. Thank you very much. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Wathers Trains, supporting hobby retailers across the world since 1932. Check out their website and learn more at Wathers.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com.